We're going to be talking about converting a Windows-only business to Mac, so 100% flip, okay? Um, this was a project I'd done um, over the course of six months, and we'll go through why uh, I've done it over six months, um, because obviously it's very important that if you're doing something like this, you do it right. Um, but it's over, over six months earlier this year, okay? So we all get the chance to, to move people from Windows to Mac. Um, and this really is, is I, I suppose, it, it, leading on from Dave Acklin's talk um, just before me today, it's, it's in the same vein. It's, it's just giving you things to think about, okay, and spark discussion and spark conversation around how and why. And believe me, this is my take on it. It, it may not be best practice, and feel free to heckle, uh, but it's, it's my take on it. Uh, so, um, as Dan mentioned, my name is uh, Gerard Allen. I'm the uh, chief technologist with iConnect. Um, and uh, Johnson Raju uh, was hoping to be here with me and unfortunately couldn't make it, but he was the IT manager uh, for this project. Okay, so uh, um, I'm here on my own and you have to put up with me for an hour. Uh, so, uh, a tree. Let's start our story with a tree. This freaked the guys at Jamf out because I wouldn't tell them what the tree symbolized. <laughs> and and they, they, they hounded me and they haggard me and they said, look, tell us about the tree. What, what's your philosophy on the tree? Are we talking about blue sky visions? Are we talking about deep thinking? Where are we going? The tree represents a tree. Okay? <laughs> and, just to explain, I'm Irish. <laughs> and more than that, I'm from Cork. And Cork, as everybody knows, is the center of the universe. So, thank you. Uh, so, um, being from Cork, we tend to drop the H after the T. Okay? So I'm, I, I went to elocution lessons, and I was taught how to pronounce my words properly and use proper diction. But then when I speed up, I drop it. So. You'll hear me saying tree instead of tree, okay? Take, take, take it that I'm not discussing trees. I'm talking about three. And if I say them, these, those, and that, it means them, these, those, and that. But when I'm in flow, all that goes out the window. So bear with me, and if there's anything you don't understand, put up your hand, and we'll see how we get on with it. So back to me, who I am, where I've come from. Uh, so I've been a Maxis admin for about 25 years now. Uh, I started off in Apple back in the early 90s. Uh, worked there for eight years. Uh, left on Mac OS 8.5 was the last project I worked on. Um, anybody here remember those days? Yeah, yeah, good. Excellent. Um, so bailed out then and went and set up a service department for a company. Uh, we grew that out. They merged with, uh, with one of their competitors. I worked, ramped up their service department for them and then exited that business and set up my own. Uh, we grew that out in Cork for about 11 years and then I was approached by a Middle Eastern company uh, who wanted to uh, basically get into the Apple space. They were well regarded in the premium retail space and they wanted to get into technology. And obviously, if you're in premium retail and you want to be in technology, there's only one way to go. So we got on board with them, exciting project. Okay, their, their vision is to be the largest APR brand in the world. Okay, the largest Apple premium reseller. Um, so I said, absolutely, exciting project and jumped aboard with them. Okay, um, so that, that company is the Almana Group, and uh, this is one of the businesses within the Almana Group, and it's a proof of concept that we've done with them, converting them to 100% Mac, with the vision of converting the whole group, about 2,500 employees, over to Mac. Okay, the agenda. Quickly run through this, okay? Um, so we'll have a quick discussion about the people involved, project overview, so we'll look at the scope of the project, uh, go through the planning phase, through to the proof of concept, onto the deployment, and there's an extra button in that, uh, in through the training, and then post install. Okay, so I'll try not to bore you. We'll see how this rocks. 
Okay, so uh, because we're on stage, I said I'd introduce a little bit of Shakespeare and we'd have the dramatis personae. So the cast of characters that were involved in this. So obviously from our side, I connect, uh, we're an Apple premium reseller, we're an consult Apple consultancy firm, we're an Apple authorized training center, we're an Apple authorized service provider, and we're Apple solutions experts in education. Um, so we do it all. Um, uh, and I've got a phenomenal team behind me that, uh, that go out there every day and do this stuff, and they make me look good. Uh, and then on the opposite side, we've got Almana Retail, okay? So uh, Almana is a, uh, as I say, they're, they're Middle Eastern. They're based out of Doha uh, with operations right across the Middle East. And they're, they're in several different verticals. So automotive, real estate, uh, retail, food and bev, uh, media, entertainment, technology. Um, some of their brands, now we've got the likes of Armani, uh, Hermes, Illy Coffee, Reebok, and loads more. Okay, uh, lots and lots of stuff going on there. Uh, so, uh, unlike Ben Toms, I don't have, uh, I'm not branded by the company, I don't have a Hermes watch, unfortunately. Uh, anybody in the team watching back this video? I don't have a Hermes watch. <laughs> hint, hint. Uh, so, the project overview. Um, we started off with a Windows and Blackberry estate. <clears throat> Excuse me. Last night took its toll a little bit on my voice. <laughs> That's better. Okay, so started off with a Windows only estate with uh, BlackBerry mobile devices. <laughs> like that. <laughs> that, took, that took me an hour. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not very good with Keynote. <laughs> And we ended up with Apple-only endpoints, okay? And that, in essence, was the scope of the project, okay? On to the planning stage of it, okay? So, so uh, the vision planning of this was, was obviously key to getting it done, having that first engagement with the client and getting them to, to understand the Apple space and the logic about doing a conversion like this. And to be honest with you, whenever we do this kind of stuff, generally it's a drip feed, okay? We get in a few and over the years it tends to grow out and you end up with some sort of a balance. Um, but straight away, uh, Wissam Almana, the, the owner of the company, um, he got it. And it's great to see when somebody gets it. You go in, you have these total cost of ownership conversations, you, you try and engage them, you try and bring them on, and the bean counters come back and say no. Right. So for, for the owner to engage straight away and to understand it and to get it. And Wissam isn't a technology guy himself. Like he, does, he, doesn't, he doesn't spend all his day on his devices. He's, uh, he's a very much sit down and meet you type of guy. Uh, but he got it. He understood it. He, he, uh, he embraced it and just ran with it and said, yeah, let's start with the Hermes office. Let's get them on board and let's get them converted. It was fantastic to see. Um, so, once we've done that, obviously, the next step in the planning is getting to know the infrastructure. Um, I had to deep dive with the IT team, and again, uh, these guys were phenomenal. Johnson um, came on board at the start, and he said, okay, look, if we're going to do it, we're going to do it. He'd been a Windows-only guy forever, um, and a damn good one at that. He'd built out a nice infrastructure inside in the office. Uh, they knew what they, they were doing. Um, and he'd been supporting the, the Windows PCs with uh, Najbi, his sidekick inside there as well. And they were doing a great job of keeping all that humming away. So to, to, to get an IT guy and come along to him and say, you know all those skills you had over the years? We're going to throw them out the window. <laughs> and he went, okay, yeah, if you say so, you know what you're doing. And I said, I hope I do. <laughs> and you know what it turns out I do? which was nice, it was nice to do that. Um, and then obviously the ultimate goal, understanding the users, okay? Because as tech guys, uh, we love playing with technology. We love geeking out and doing all these kind of things. But if it doesn't work for the end user, it's useless, absolutely useless. So it, it was phenomenal to, to hear the talks going on over the last couple of days and hear everybody on the same mindset that's all focused on the end users. And if you look at the, the IBM one, uh, that just blew me away. 
we now have a total cost of ownership conversation that you can have with absolutely anyone. And if, IBM, if it's good enough for IBM, it's going to be good enough for anybody else. And that, that, that for me, as uh, being an Apple advocate over the years, that is phenomenal. That's a big game changer uh, because I work in the enterprise space as well. I work with the likes of Johnson & Johnson, EMC, these types of companies. And they've already embraced the Mac, but trying to spread out of that is always very, very difficult. You, all, all you have to do now is show them the IBM slide deck and the job's done. Let's get it. Here, email this through. Give me a shout when you're ready. Looking forward to the next couple of years on that. Um, but again, with IBM, right down to the users, the user interface, the user experience, and making sure that everything was about the user and get technology out of the way. Okay? Um, so, we, ooh, I've got a light. Didn't realize that, wrong button, excuse me. Uh, onto the proof of concept. Okay, or as I call it, winning over IT. Okay, because if you don't have those guys on board, then you're going to get resistance from them, which means that they, that energy passes on to the users and things don't run as smoothly as you'd like to. Um, so again, the first thing that we done with the, uh, with the IT team was I got them two MacBook Pros and I said, here are the boxes, off you go. I said, don't worry about doing anything business-like with them at the moment, just take them home and use them, okay? And I gave it to them for a month, and I said, use them as home devices, set up your mail, watch videos on it, that's all I want you to do. Because if we can get the Windows-only guys loving the Mac, then it means that that filters down, that, gets, that breaks away an awful lot of the barriers. Uh, and that works fantastically well. Um, so what we done was we got it into, into their hands, and then what we done was we got them to pass it around to their staff. So once the guys were comfortable with it, they went out to the staff members. So the two laptops went, I think we had about 35 on the, the, the team inside there. So they took it on a weekly rotation, took it home, played with it, watched videos, all the usual bits and pieces. And again, breaking down those barriers and starting to get people comfortable with the concept of going down this road. Um, then deep diving in with the, the tech team and going through all the apps, okay? So not only going, okay, this is what you've got on the Windows side, so this is what we will give you on the Mac side, but also challenging. Okay, why do you have that? And why are you using it? And what, what, what purpose does it serve? And what does it fix for you? And let's see if we can find better ways. If we're doing a flip like this, let's not just do photocopy. Okay, you're using Microsoft Office here, we'll use Microsoft Office there. You're using X here, we'll use Y there. Uh, challenge all the way through and ask the questions and ask it of the, the IT team, ask it of management, ask it of the users, and get to a point where people are really thinking about what tools they're using and why they're using them. And that really helps spark off a conversation where suddenly some of the traditional things that they have and they're paying money for, they don't really need them, they don't really use them, and you can start clearing that stuff out. And we've done a nice bit of housekeeping around that and saved saved a significant amount of money. And again, when you're starting to talk back to the, to the financial guys on it, if you're telling them, you know what, uh, your guys have a copy of Photoshop each, for example, on their machines, two people need it, and the rest of them just need preview to crop images, just as an example. Then suddenly you're taking out licenses for Photoshop out of the equation, saving money year on year. Um, so that was an important part of the phase. Uh, obviously, file management, uh, the, the big thing that, that Windows guys have is will, will it connect to our file servers? Will we be able to get access? Will we have permissions? Blah, blah, blah. Just giving them comfort around that and making sure that they, the look and feel, let's say, of how they used to do it, that they understand simple GUI stuff. But again, it's, a, it's an important consideration when you're doing that. And uh, then o overcoming some of the gotchas. So again, they have follow me printing inside there, so making sure that they, uh, they were able to, to use that. Um, we had a look at the Windows only stuff, okay? And uh, what we, we, we ran with it during the proof of concept phase uh, was VMware and Windows 7, I believe it was, uh, on the machines. And there was a performance hit and we discussed how much of a performance hit and how acceptable that was to the users. Um, so what we ended up doing was using X2, okay? Um, so terminal services in, and 
absolutely humming. I mean, like, and this was all Johnson's work. He went way off. He wasn't happy with the performance. He came back with the solution and built it out. And uh, absolutely humming. If, if any of you are looking at a Windows thin client type of, of, of thing, definitely have a look at X2. That really blew me away. Um, so all those bits and pieces and, and getting that built out and getting, getting it bedded down and getting it right. Uh, we spent a lot of time on that. Um, and again, when I say we, most of this, I kind of built out the model. I handed it off to the guys and the guys went and tweaked and uh, manipulated and came back and challenged me on bits and pieces and asked me for support on different issues. Uh, so very much a collaborative event because at that stage, they, they, they were comfortable with the Mac. They were, they were confident that, you know what, this isn't, this isn't some scary, weird platform that we're going to have to spend years learning about. Uh, on to deployment. So again, preparation is everything. Taking that time to look at it and taking that time to, to engage with everybody and make sure everyone's comfortable with it. Uh, so standard configuration. So we spun up a JSS. Uh, done the jump start with the two guys, um, and uh, we had a, um, uh, an imaging platform, obviously, so we, we could net boot onto the machines. Uh, and we only really net booted really to lay down that initial uh, hidden administrator account and to bind to the JSS and that kind of stuff. Um, to bind or not to bind? That is the question. <laughs> We've heard it all week. We've, we've, those of you who were here last year have heard it. Uh, ongoing debate. And you know what? Uh, I'm going to give my two pence worth on it. Um, in a multi-user lab scenario, it makes absolute sense. Anywhere else, it's becoming less and less of a need. And it's becoming more and more cumbersome to manage. Um, so but if you don't need it, don't use it. Um, people say, okay, single sign-on and all these kind of bits and pieces. Uh, you've got Keychain. Right? Enter your password once, tick the box to save it, and forget about it. Right? Uh, so, uh, yeah, for, for that one, it's kind of a no-brainer, really. Um, uh, and uh, in, in around the packaging, what we decided to do was, um, because we're waiting for Jamf's uh, packager, which should be here any decade. Uh, we, we ran it, and I, I love the guys in Jamf, and I hope, I hope they, uh, they don't take it too disparaging, but come on, guys. Um, uh, we decided to go with Auto Packager and uh, JSS Importer. Okay, and big shout out to the developers of that, okay? They're, they're guys who are, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> They're, they're, they're guys who, who have a real job and, and still do this kind of stuff in the background, okay? And uh, again, anybody who was at my talk last year, have a look at it back on the videos if you didn't see it. There's, there's a lot of reference to uh, a lot of what the community is doing there. Uh, if, you, if you're not aware of it, get on board. It'll help a lot. Um, so, so yeah, auto packager, pull down the latest version of the packages, JSS importer, push them up into smart groups, and then it's just a matter of enabling those smart groups and, and letting the stuff flow out through. Um, so that was my deployment lab, right? Stuck away in the back of the office. I stripped down uh, some of the, the shelves there. We threw up the Macs, and uh, literally, the, the, the guys were kind of going, so what do you do? And I said, I sit here and I put my feet on the desk and play Angry Birds. Well, <laughs> while this all happens. So net boot up, lay down the, uh, the uh, bind to the JSS and the, uh, the hidden user account, restart, push down all the packages. Okay, and beautiful thing to see. And as you can see by that, that was all done wirelessly. Okay, I don't have any, uh, I don't have any power cables plugged in there, which was a bit of a risk, but I said, you know what, these are max. They don't need power. You can run all day. <laughs> I actually got away with it. I, I, I didn't think I would. I really didn't believe that, that I would. And I, was, I had a contingency plan, but I got away with it. Um, and wireless. So we were running over a, an airport extreme, actually, now that I think of it, because they had an in-house wireless solution that I evaluated and told them my thoughts on it. <laughs> 
and, uh, and they have subsequently replaced that. They've got a Cisco uh, infrastructure in place now. Um, but at the time, uh, I just wasn't happy with it. So I went out, grabbed an Airport Extreme, and for that number of Macs sitting up there, it done its job. Uh, and again, it's one of those things where you take a deep breath and you say, this isn't the right product. If, uh, if I was back home, I would have pulled a Maru or something like that down off the shelf and, uh, and used that. But given what I had in front of me, that's what I ran with, and it worked. It's bizarre and all as it may seem, it worked. Uh, I'd never do that in a larger production environment, and uh, uh, I, would, uh, I would encourage you to take caution. Uh, so we had it built, we had it ready to go. So on to the user training. Okay, and the big thing, people fear change. Okay, it, it's, it's inevitable, it's, it's kind of, you know what, this tool works for me, it may take 45 minutes to shut down because it's applying updates, one of, I think we had 320 uh, from Dave Ackland earlier on. Uh, so all those kind of things, uh, clunky and all as they are, people fear change. They, they, this tool does this job, and when I click this button, this happens. Um, so the first part of the user training was that handout of the machines. Take it home, here's Safari, fire it up and see what happens. Okay, And taking it very basic uh, like that. Um, and sitting down with them and going through the basics, the absolute basics of this is, uh, this is where system preferences are. Okay, so you want to change your desktop? Absolutely change your desktop. This is how. Okay, this is how you right click on a Mac. Okay, uh, it, 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 these are things I have clients out there that I still go into and they go, you know what, it'd be great if Apple had a two button mouse. It's amazing how many times this still happens, okay? So going through all those very, very basic things, what we did was we brought them into, uh, into their boardroom and we laid out the Macs. Uh, they weren't quite as tight as they look in this picture. They did have elbow room. Uh, and we brought them in over the course of, I think over the course of three days, we brought them in in small groups and we rotated them out. So I did different sessions with them each day, just again. So we, we, all, we kept it tight, we kept it to an hour, an hour and a half, ran off the stuff, left them off back to their jobs, uh, following day back in, a little bit of recap, a bit of Q&A on what they did, and, uh, um, uh, and then on to the next session, just to make sure that they felt comfortable with what they were doing. Um, and the feedback from that, like we, we, it, they'd done a survey inside and the CSATs on that were, were fantastic. Uh, the comments on it back were absolutely excellent, but it was because we took that time to go through the basics, to take it at their pace. And we did have a couple in the audience that were Mac heads. They had Macs at home. Uh, they were in the, the graphics department inside there. They knew what they were doing, but they swam with me and uh, they, they kind of said, yeah, let's, let, let's go and let's do it right and make sure that everybody is on the same path, okay? Which was fantastic. And again, making it specific to their environment, okay? You see so many people who, let's say, self-train off videos on the web or people who come along and uh, they'll get a, a trainer who can fit inside that box and can deliver from a sheet of paper. Okay, so going beyond that and making it absolutely specific to their needs. So designing it from the ground up based on what they need to do in their job day to day. Right? Down to, okay, this is how you access your printer. This is how you do this. This is how you do that. Okay, and certifying the users. Right? They love that little piece of paper at the end. Okay, coming along to someone and saying, you are a star. Right? You, you, you have achieved something. They love that. That's a, it's, it's, it's a small thing, but you know what? It's important to them, uh, and it really fe makes them feel, feel valued as well. Um, just reading through my notes. They make absolutely no sense. Sorry. I, 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 I don't normally put notes into things, so uh, yeah. Bit, that was a late night one, I think. Uh, so there we go. So on to post install. OK, project's done. Users are happy. I've walked away. OK. But Johnson and Najmi have continued to develop it and continue to grow it out, and they've been doing some great stuff uh, in the background. So they've built out their self-service portal. So I asked uh, Johnson to send me over something, um, and that's just a very quick snapshot of it. So they've started to use the self-service URLs. Um, so they've got quick links inside there into their HR site, 
Um, we've got a button there that uh, they can open a mail from. What Johnson really wants to do with this is almost use it as its own little ecosystem so that it fires up at login for the user and it's always there and that's their go-to place for everything. Um, again, that's a, that's a slimmed down version. They've done an awful lot more work since then, but uh, just get a quick snapshot of that. Um, uh, so building out that self-service portal, they've taken that and they've run with it. Um, some tweaks, okay, so they've put in some scripts. They've got a beautiful little one-liner that, uh, that speeds up the login process so it's not going out looking for, uh, for, for servers to mount and all that kind of stuff. Um, um, uh, app updates, obviously, they've taken ownership of that. So they're now running all the, the auto packager stuff. They're managing that, they're understanding that system and playing with that um, and really getting, uh, getting very comfortable in that space. And again, fast response to users' needs. Um, you'll come along and you might have somebody out in Bahrain uh, who is a store manager out there and suddenly decides he can't live without VLC. Right? They, they can whip that down and get it out to him very, very quickly. Um, and the feedback on the reduction in help desk support has been fantastic. We're all Mac guys, okay? We know that you put in a bunch of Macs, your tickets are gonna go down. Uh, but the IT guys, because they've been Windows guys forever, really weren't ready for the amount of time they had to drink coffee. <laughs> I, uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if I went back over there now and they had a pool table inside there uh, because uh, they, they, they've significantly reduced a help desk. Uh, the, the number of calls have reduced down uh, um, and the number of tickets going into their tickets, ticketing system. And again, it's only a small team, uh, but they're, they're geographically diverse because they've got, uh, they've got Hermes retail stores throughout the Middle East, so all those store managers have Macs and their in-house team obviously as well. So they do have ongoing stuff. Um, so, uh, uh, and this, this project has gone so well from, for them that we're about to kick off the iOS phase of it now. Okay, so we've done a little bit of pilot work on the iOS stuff, but we're, we're ready to go 100% on board with that. Um, and I think that's it. It is. That's it. Okay. Thank you. And nobody throwing rotten fruit. That's always uh, reassuring. So, any questions at all? Yep. Uh, I think we were about 35, 36. Yeah, so again, it is, it's a proof of concept for what we're going to do across the entire group. So we have about 2,500 staff uh, across the group, around about, uh, we'll be looking at about practically about 1,200 devices, uh, 1,200 uh, PCs going out the window and converting them to Mac. We have some challenges, obviously, around uh, endpoints that are uh, using EPOS, electron electronic point of sale, that are going to stay in place. But uh, yeah, so this 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 was a small project, but uh, it's it's scalable, and, and we've proven the scalability of it. Yep. Yeah. Do you run into any hurdles that you actually weren't able to, uh, like, oh, was there anything where you're like, well, now we've got virtualized, and then, you know, Yeah, there, there, there were a couple of, let's say, handwritten bits and pieces because, um, excuse me. <laughs> Sweet nectar. Um, because, um, because this is a, let's say, a franchise of Hermes in Paris, um, they're tied into Hermes systems and we don't have the uh, ability to influence that. Um, uh, so, so there were a couple of Windows only solutions that were running their back end that they had built and we absolutely had to virtualize that. Um, there were a lot there that they were Windows only and we're, some of the stuff we're, we're talking about front-ending them and, and we're building out, we will be building out apps for them that will be responsive, mobile native, all the rest of it. So there's some stuff that we will be, uh, that we will be taking away from that Windows environment, but there were one or two that were outside our control and we had to go that way with them. Yeah. Anyone else? Yes. Did you make all your users admin? Um, no, I, I, and you know what? I, I wish I had. 
um, and, and we probably will flip that switch. Um, it was, to be honest with you, it was really to reassure the IT guys, uh, you know, uh, just that little bit of comfort. Okay? And, and that was purely what it was. We had the discussion and I wasn't going to push too hard. Okay? It's uh, now that they've got it and they understand it, yeah, we, we, we will. And as this project scales out, they'll all be admins. And you know what? Break down the barriers. Let, let them go, let them explore, and let them be better at what they do. Yeah, behind you. Yeah, it, it was, uh, they, they, they had a lot of fear around it, okay? And, and we did have some kickback from the users on the GUI, um, like their, their, um, how they were used to seeing it in Explorer and how it was laid out and, and even uh, as say, some of the right-click features. And Johnson has, has written a couple, of, uh, a couple of scripts that go into the contextual menu now to give them a couple of little bits and pieces around that. What I'll do is I'll chase them down and I'll put them up in my presenter notes. Um, I'll distribute them afterwards. So, but yeah, there were, there were one or two, but nothing major. Uh, again, that training element where we sat down, we walked through, and we spent time on that, and we said, okay, this is how you connect to your shares, okay, this, this is how it presents itself. You're used to seeing it this way, this is exactly the same thing, and we, get, we gave them comfort, okay, and, and doing it that way and doing it slowly and engaging with them and taking the, the questions there and then on the spot, and like there, there were, because we'd done it across three groups, so we had, uh, we had three different teams running in rotation on it, um, the same questions were cropping up. And if there, was a, if there was a gotcha that was coming right across the board, then I'd run off that evening in my hotel room and I'd either document something so that they had a, a PDF of it and, and they could see it, or else I'd script something up to, to solve the problem. Uh, up here, yes. Thank you very much. So, accepting what he just said, I need to repeat everybody's question. <laughs> uh, over here. Okay, so uh, how long was the end user training uh, for this pilot project and how did we decide upon that? The, the end user training ran over three days, uh, an hour and a half each day. Okay, so in total they had, and you wouldn't do maths, four, four and a half hours uh, in total of training, give or take. I, I, I don't generally stick to a clock. And uh, like these kind of things, at some stage somebody will drag me off stage when my time's up. It was much the same with the user training. So if we needed to overflow, we overflowed. Um, how we decided on it, basically we, um, we polled the users and we asked them what their key points were. And obviously, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, we knew what some of the pain points were going to be as well, and we were prepared for them. So between the combination of that, I had a fairly clear agenda of what we were going to cover in it uh, and had that timed out. So, and again, it's, it's something very simple. Like we saw with Dean um, in his keynote, um, the way Jamf do it is they drop a, a box on your desk with a love heart on it, and off you go. Okay, uh, but they've. Like, if you see, if you see Jam self service, uh, you don't need to know anything. It's all there for you. Um, with this, um, I, I, I basically, I, I knew what needed to be covered before I went in there, and that informed it. And there were one or two surprises that cropped up during it, and uh, and we dealt with them literally on the spot. Um, again, this, <clears throat> I don't normally do training, but they specifically wanted me to because, uh, well, because I knew everything, basically. Uh, I had built out the whole project right from, uh, from vision planning through proof of concept right way through. Um, so they had that comfort of knowing that, okay, the guy who's built this is delivering the training. And also, because I've been doing this so long, hopefully any question that crops up can be answered. Uh, let's go here. Yeah, so the question is, uh, can I talk a little bit more about what the use case was for the Macs, uh, what they were using it for, and the second half of that? 
feedback from end users, absolutely. So um, these were, uh, because we took the whole, um, the whole organization or the whole office, we had a little bit of everything. So we had the, the accounts team, uh, true to the administration team, true to uh, product purchasing, shipping, uh, logistics, all that end of it, um, true to the uh, design marketing departments, and then the store managers, okay? So we had a very broad spectrum there. Um, and they were all using it for their day-to-day -day jobs in all those verticals, okay? Which presents a lot of challenges, okay? Again, you, you can take this and you can apply that to IBM. Right? It's, it, it's, it's the same type of thing. You're not picking uh, an easy target. Let's go with marketing and let's convert them to Mac. Right? That, that would be far too easy. Uh, they all, they, they, secretly, they had Macs at home and I think they were doing a lot of work on that and bringing it in and plugging it into their PC when they came in the following day. But uh, um, so, so taking all those elements, um, and we, we managed to achieve uh, with very little difficulty getting them all doing exactly the same thing across on the Mac. So um, uh, one, of, one of the things that uh, we decided to do, uh, and I think it was the right decision, was leave the accountants use Excel uh, through the Windows terminal services um, because Excel Mac is, isn't quite the same as Excel for PC. Um, so having that X2 environment where they could terminal into their Windows desktop and run that kind of stuff, absolutely lightened the load on a lot of that stuff. Uh, feedback from the users has been phenomenal. Uh, literally, from the word go, uh, they embraced it. They've run with it. Um, I was over there with them probably about five, six weeks ago, um, and I had people coming up to me telling me what they could do. I said, do you know you can do this? I said, wow, oh yeah, that's cool. Yeah, been doing that for 20 years. Uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, like you're getting that feedback. They're engaging more with it. Um, the feedback from the IT team is really, it, it, it's just humming. And, and again, I've no doubt that's down to the two guys troubleshooting day by day and doing all the stuff that IT has to do anyway. Um, but yeah, uh, user feedback. We don't have one person in the organization who is resisting it. Um, I think that's, that's credit is due a lot to the, the management team there and the way they embrace their team and they, they kind of break down barriers with their team. That's not purely a technical solution, let's say. Um, so there's an awful lot of kudos due to the management for, for the, the environment that they create uh, within the office. Um, but yeah, like we, we've got some guys inside there who will be retiring in a couple of years. They don't need the headache of change and all the rest of it, but they've embraced it and they've gone with it. Yes? Um, there were a couple of things that informed us. So the question is, what made the customer want to make this transformation in the first place? Um, there were a couple of elements. I, I think partially because they bought an Apple company, so they now suddenly had an internal Apple team. Uh, that obviously influenced it a little bit, um, but uh, much beyond that, they looked at the security features, okay? Uh, in the Middle East, there's, there's, a, there's a big security culture, let's say, so, so people are, um, I won't quite say paranoid, but they, 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 they're, they're very embedded in making sure that things are secure and all that kind of stuff. A little bit more than, well, definitely more than Ireland, because in Ireland we just, it's going to, yeah, I'll be fine. <laughs> it's, uh, it, uh, don't tell any of my uh, multinational customers that. We do take care of them. <laughs> uh, but um, uh, yeah, so, so security concerns around it. Um, we looked at total cost of ownership. We had that discussion because, uh, I, again, it was me going to them with a vision of how things could be. So it wasn't them coming to me and going, I want to do this. Uh, I still had to sell the concept to them. Um, but so we looked at things like total cost of ownership. We looked at device life cycle. Um, we looked at user, user, um, uh, user enjoyment, if you like, uh, owning the device that they want to use. Um, now, again, there's probably a couple of guys who would have been perfectly happy to stay with PC, um, but once the decision was made, it was made. Um, uh, we looked at all those elements. So, so there, there, was, uh, there was a lot of discussion around, is this going to be the right thing? 
Um, the owners were, were, were very clear that that was something that they wanted, which was great to see, because you very rarely see somebody who buys in that well and that fast. Um, but we still had to have the whole discussion about, is this the right thing to do? Um, so can I share a bit about the, the, the total cost of ownership piece? Um, it's really, because Apple don't share that information, uh, they used to a few years ago and they haven't done for several years. It's really about, um, I suppose, experience and gut instinct. Um, as I say, that's gone away now with what IBM are sharing. Um, and and that, that's going to change the conversation. But mine would very much be around, uh, forget about the upfront cost of the device and take into consideration the fact that that device will still be around a couple of years longer than a Windows machine will be there. Um, take out, we don't totally eliminate antivirus, okay? But you can take antivirus away from the endpoint. You take the reduction in help desk tickets, you take the, um, the optimization of some of the software where if you really want to get down to the nitty gritty and if you're let's say, an awful lot of people use uh, Microsoft Word, which I consider bloatware at this stage, when all most people need is a text editor, okay? They, they, they could use, I think I used to use RPED back in the DOS days, and that would still do for an awful lot of users. Technically, you could go with the pages number keynote argument. Um, there's an awful lot of stuff there where you can strip out costs without sacrificing the, the user and, and the user experience with that. Um, and that informed a lot of the conversation. And again, the, the happiness index for the users. Okay? Having a machine that booted fast, that ran well, that they could be productive on, and the value that that, that brings back into the company. So a couple of the softer things like that as well. Anyone else? There we go. Yeah, so, so what email clients? They, they were using Outlook on the, the Windows side, um, and we gave them the option of mail or Outlook on the, the Mac side. So we, we let them choose themselves, and we just made sure it was fit for purpose. And again, we trained in both the clients. So uh, I'd done a session with those who wanted to use, actually, I'd done the same session for both. So I showed people the, okay, if you're using mail, this is what happens. If you're using Outlook, this is what happens you go and choose. Um, and I actually don't know the mix of how many are using which. Um, I must go back and find that out, but I know that there were a lot of people using mail. Yes? Uh, they, they were, um, they use a cloud-based solution, so they don't have it on-prem. Yeah. Anyone else? Going once, going twice, and we're done. Excellent. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Thank you.